gingerbread house making seems like a pretty simple holiday craft, but we're going to really optimize it this year with a little help of 3D printing. Because like I always say, anything worth doing is worth doing optimally. A brand new 3D printer is in the shop today. This is the Ender 3 by Creality. We've tried a diode laser by them and really liked it. So really curious to see what we think of this one. Here's everything that came in the box and it's pretty assembled already. A little bit of assembly is required, but it's minimal and really straightforward, which is a huge benefit, I think, with these machines because there's peace of mind in knowing that you didn't, you know, accidentally put a screw in the wrong place or something and make your machine not work properly. Um, it only took about 15 minutes before we were threading the filament in and printing the test print. We noticed immediately that this was a really fast 3D printer, but then we realized there's two modes. There's a high res and a low res mode. The low res mode goes a lot faster, trading off a little bit of that precision in the layer lines and stuff. And then there's a high res mode, which takes longer and blah, 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 blah. You get the point. Um, so our cat looks a little bit furry, but there's a reason for that and for 3D printing cookie cutters. The low res mode was great because it went quickly and there's not like a lot of intricate detail that we need really tight layer lines for. So I guess I kind of said it already. The first step in optimizing this gingerbread house is that we're gonna 3D print cookie cutters. So we know that each piece will perfectly fit together and be perfectly square, uh, which is a lot easier than like hand cutting or something like that. Uh, in terms of adhering to the plate, right. this one crushed the assignment. Um, it adhered so well that Michael ended up cracking the cookie cutter a little bit, getting it off. I mean, in this case, it didn't it didn't matter. The cookie cutter is still functional. Um, and that's kind of a good thing, too, because, you know, you can have issues if it is popping off. But uh, just something to note. Here it goes. It's almost there. Yeah. Uh. Ah, there it is. That was filming. Uh, we went ahead and printed a full set and we're going to make the files available to 3D print your own uh, cookie cutters in the information of this video. So check it out if you want to. Uh, but now it's time to roll out some gingerbread and get baking. We're using a construction gingerbread recipe, which is like not, it's baked with structural integrity in mind, not necessarily flavor. I actually have a real question because like, do people actually eat gingerbread houses? Because I made one last year and a lot of people were like, oh, but if it tastes bad, why would you want it? Like, I'm, in my mind, I'm like, does anyone eat gingerbread houses? Have you ever seen someone just go up and bite a gingerbread house? I personally haven't, but maybe I'm the weirdo. Tell me in the comments. And then these get popped in the oven and then they bake for about an hour. Wanna make a gingerbread house? Yes, sir. Um, all right, so if you don't know, we're, we're actually making a much larger gingerbread house this month. And this little one is really helpful because it's serving as an opportunity to like test out our construction gingerbread recipe. And uh, Michael also designed these little 3D printed brackets um, that the gingerbread house can sit in to make assembly more stable.
Yeah, we're but just... I'm wondering if we should, if I should grab two clamps. Clamps. Because we can't use the top racks with this design. Uh, this is royal icing that's going to harden like a brick. And again, we're digitally fabricating a much bigger gingerbread house. So very excited about having the opportunity to just double check that the recipe is going to be as strong as we need it. But now with our little brackets, we can just build this, you know, and, and at first this felt a little ridiculous, but I've got to say this made the gingerbread house making process seven times more pleasant because uh, I wasn't stressed about it falling down. Not, e not even a little bit. Uh, Michael gets full credit. These were his little brainchild and we're going to make the files available if you want to download these and 3D print these yourself. We also might just sell the finished ones too if you don't have a 3D printer. Look at that. Perfectly square. See what makes me happy about this gingerbread house is that it looks hand done because it, it like we baked it ourselves and stuff but like because of 3D printed cookie cutters and because of the 3D printed brackets it looks like we DIY'd it, but it looks like we just DIY'd it perfectly. And that is that not always the goal? All right, here's a little roof hack um, for your gingerbread house making. Uh, this might be cheating, you know. If it is, just, it's fine. Um, but yeah, smearing some royal icing on the back of the roof, and then I'm putting a little paper bag on top of that, and I'm going to let that harden. And then once the bottom and the roof hardens, then I'm going to put it all together. And then it won't, like, slip off, you know? It's sticky. <laughs> Why wouldn't you just push the paper down and then smush it with the paper? See, I thought it was going to smear easier than this. Okay, so I let the royal icing set for a couple hours and now the two parts can go together. And there you go. It's like 3D printer aided gingerbread house making. I really feel like we have this process optimized. So if you use any of these files, let us know and happy holidays from our workshop to yours.